morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Sunday, what is that, March 4th, <laughs> Sunday, March 4th, 2018. My name is Marcus Conti. I am the former sanitation enforcement agent and sole plaintiff in Conti vs. DSNY lawsuit against the Department of Sanitation for blowing the whistle, for retaliation, for what appears to be discrimination, for blowing the whistle on the illegal quota. So we have a, a court date. I want to announce this uh, that there'll be a press conference. It's coming together. It's coming together. People are responding. People are uh, just sent out an email blast to all the senators, all the congressmen. So uh, everybody, select press, everybody knows about this now. <laughs> well, they will Monday when they open their email, unless they're getting it uh, specifically, unless they're getting it uh, on the weekend. So March 7, 2 p.m., March 7, this Wednesday, March 7, 2 p.m., out on the court steps at 27 Madison Avenue, right around 25th Street. All right, is the New York Supreme Court Appellate Division First Department. All right, so we're going to have, uh, again, I, if you watch my last video, it's summary judgment. We're not allowed to um, be heard from the floor. So five judges in our democracy, right? <laughs> this is democracy, right? Five judges will decide if what I've submitted is valid. Now, on that day, all of the recordings that have been um, talked about on this channel, the Ortega, you know, the 22-minute um, manifesto where the, uh, the, the enforcement um, sergeant talks about the quota at length for 22 minutes. We have all kinds of insane evidence. All the links are down below. The, the links are not down below, but if you look through the um, videos uh, that I've put up over the last year, you'll find um, you'll find all the evidence. And uh, judges are reviewing the same evidence. So summary judgment. We'll make a little noise outside of the courthouse. Very respectful. Very. We, we want to. We want. See, look, I'm not. I'm not here to say that that this is rigged, right? I'm here to, to say that on March 7th, when, this Wednesday, at 2 p.m., Conti vs. DSNY, the case, all the files, everything up to this date will slide across those five judges' desks. They all have copies, right? They all have the, the copies of the recordings, and they will convene together and they will they will review the material and then render a verdict. They will decide on this case. Three possibilities. One, they can vote entirely in my favor and say, oh, yes, Mr. Conti has proven his case. Give him what he wants. The second is, oh, yes, Mr. Conti has proven his case, but we would like to recommend this case back to the lower court for a jury trial, right? And the other one is they could say, Mr. Conti has not has not made any grounds, has no grounds, has no um, legal basis to appeal. Uh, his, his, his arguments are stupid and they don't, they don't uh, matter or they'll, they'll reach for technicalities or some other nonsense, right? And then they'll throw, the, that they'll, they'll confirm the case, uh, they'll, they'll close the case, close the appeal and say uh, they'll rule 100% in favor of DSNY and New York State Division of Human Rights. So those are the the possible three outcomes of this thing. Right? So more, you know, that's that's how does this thing tie into the big picture? Why am I? Why why is this? It's a it's the First Amendment. That's what it ultimately comes down to. It's a violation of First Amendment rights and also violation of Seventh Amendment rights. Trying to keep this case in particular, which involves public corruption, the the exposure of an illegal ticket quota, and and uh, grotesque um, uh, you know levels of inequality where certain 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 um, uh, parts of an agency are segregated by race, right? So there's all these things going on inside of a, a, a city agency, and 
mostly the, the, the illegal ticket quota, which generates an estimated, I did the numbers, about $600 million over the course of a 30-year period. It's a lot of money that they, you know, they, they took from the, from the public. You know, it's like, it's what our friend John Quaglione, the guy who was running for city council, said. He says, you're turning people into ATM machines. You know, it's, 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 a, it's an unnecessary tax when you push agents to illegally, um, it's illegal. Ticket quotas are illegal, right? Law enforcement ticket quotas are illegal. Pushing them to illegally uh, 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 slap these tickets on people, turning them into ATM machines. So that's that's what's going on. What's the motive to 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 shut a guy like me up? Of course, it's six hundred million dollars. What more do you need to know? <laughs> His motive. That's the motive. It's a profit motive, right? So that's that's the case. That's the um, you know it's it's a violation of my First Amendment rights to speak up. It it violates a lot of whistleblower quote whistleblower laws that are in place. But the First Amendment overrides everything. It's your I I see it's see something say something right. That's what this case is about. And the the problem is that you could see what I'm going through. I mean you see how hard it is to get your voice heard. If you go through the standard channels, you call all the agencies that are already in place to intervene, like the Department of Investigations, the Public Advocates Office, the City Council, this is New York City. So all of these things are set up to, to, uh, to catch corruption and to, to um, it's not like, it's not like there's some special agency, all the discriminatory agencies, New York State Division of Human Rights, New York City Commission on Human Rights, they're all there. They're all in place. The, the courts, it's all there, right? You don't need anything more. What you need is political will to actually execute it. But you can't prosecute yourself, right? The city, it's like if the city finds the their agency guilty of discrimination and retaliation for whistleblowing and engaging in an illegal quota, it's like, you know, it's like, it's like, you know, any, any of us, it's any of us finding ourselves guilty and then, you know, rendering a charge. So, you know, that's what we're up, that's what we're up against. Very difficult. All right. So it is a first amendment, right? We're seeing the, um, in the media right now, onslaught of, uh, of, salt on independent uh, media, people like me, people like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm nobody, I'm a little guy, right? But there are, there are significant um, uh, people who have uh, a, a, a far reach. I, hopefully I, you know, I can, I can, I'm affecting the conversation in my little way. But there are people that are, are really, really uh, uh, affecting the narrative. And the establishment is is nervous. They're scared because what what CIA, NSA, FBI, even the executive branches have always done is to is to totally they've already done it. Monopolize the mainstream media and then feed the narrative to them, and that narrative is what is supposed to shape public opinion, shape public consciousness, to make everybody feel safe and happy. Oh yes, the elections are so integral and isn't America great and, and isn't everything wonderful and, and oh yes, feel confident about voting, voting rights, yes, you know, civil rights. So oh, yes, we're so civil and we're so right. <laughs> so this is what this is what we're uh, we're up against. And we're 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 not. We saw you know, two thousand sixteen elections were rigged. You know Hillary Clinton, Bernie Sanders keep saying it over and over again. You can't forget the reason why the whole Russian narrative evolved. The whole Russian narrative evolved because Hillary Clinton and Podesta and that whole organization, the DNC, with Debbie Wasserman Schultz and Donna Brazil and all these people were were in in bed with the media and it, and they got caught. And Podesta and 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 uh, you know all these guys they were laundering money through the through the Clinton Foundation and when it finally when someone finally exposed it whether it is Seth Rich or some other informant inside whether it was Eric Braverman whether it was 
whether it was in fact somehow the Awan brothers, how they ha somehow it leaked out, right? Somehow it leaked. What's absolutely sure is that Russian spies did not come in and and invade the DNC. That's a, that's the lie to cover the fact that they got caught caught cheating, right? They were cheating, right? All the exit polls were throughout the country were off 8%, 10%, 12%. Polls were closed. People were purged off the off the the voting rolls, right? Machines were 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 taken out of polling places. Boxes of uncounted ballots, uncounted provisional ballots in California to the tune of $200 million weren't even counted and they called the election. So the, 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 the DNC has admitted in open court down in Florida with the DNC fraud lawsuit with Jared and Elizabeth Beck leading the thing have admitted in open court that the elections, the DNC in fact picks the candidate. Right? There is no election. The election is fake. The election is a is to is to is to, to create uh, the perception that our candidates are real, our candidates are chosen by the people. They are not. Average Senate seat to run for Senate in the United States of America is, is a tune of you know thirty thirty five million dollars just to get a, a proper campaign off the ground. Right? Who has that kind of money? Nobody has that kind of money. So you have very corrupt. You know, politicians that take that money and they'll they're actors. They'll say whatever they want. You know, they'll say whatever the donors say, right? And then once they're elected, they they have to pay back that donor. They have to give them favors. So how do they get? You know, what what why why do people like the Koch brothers, Koch brothers, Koch brothers, Koch brothers whatever? You know, it's two jerk offs and <laughs> two rich guys, right? Why do they buy politicians? Why do they? Why did it? Why would someone spend twenty-two million dollars or fifty-eight million dollars to help elect a senator, right? Because they they're involved in corporate deals and and, and uh, stock deals or oil deals or whatever they're they're involved in, and they need certain legisla legislation that gives them tax breaks, that gives them, uh, uh, you know legality to make more money. So that $32 million investment in a senator where they're guaranteed a favor, right? That's where we are. That's America, right? We, you buy a politician, you, you give them a bunch of money, and then you get your favor, right? And that the favor for someone like the, the Koch brothers or for, you know, large corporations like Apple or, or Google or, or Facebook or now, you know, any of these organizations... Is in, it could be in the billions of dollars, right? Billions, right? So that little bit of an investment is well worth it. So that's where we're that's where we're at, right? We need to get the money out of politics, right? We need to make it illegal again. When 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 money flows into a campaign, and there's evidence that that favors are being given, that's illegal. That's called bribery. You have to lock these people up. So. Limit the, you know, overturn Citizens United and any of the laws that allow money to flow into politicians without a limit, right? Without a, a, a cap, right? Or go back to public financing. Just politicians get $100,000 to run a campaign. Once they're on the ballot, they run and, and they stay honest. Term limits, two years, that's it. Congress, Senate, two years, get out, you're done, right? right? So... Once you do that, then you have to have those honest brokers then then mold the the um, the tax law, right? Corporations. You just saw the Republicans. They you know under Trump, President Trump, you know they gave the the corporations a fourteen percent tax break. It's outrageous. That's they they already don't pay tax now. They don't pay they don't pay less of the tax that they don't pay. Right, so it's an it's an incentive to not pay tax at all, and there's the trick, the trickle down. There's the trillions of dollars that's supposed to hit the real economy. Instead, corporations don't reciprocate. There is no trickle down. It's 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 a lie, right? So corporations have an interest in keeping this corrupt political system in place. Everyone in the system, you know, makes money and by virtue of their little cubicle job or their you know, their judgeship or their prosecutor, 
prosecutorial position somewhere, right? It's a very corrupt system. So you have to get the money out of politics. You have to have free and fair elections. Accountability. Let's talk about that. Accountability in elections. We use shit machines that are unaccountable. But do we have the machines? Is it possible to have actual election integrity? Of course it is. Of course it is. We have ATM machines. We have ATM machines that are, 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 are exact to the penny. But when it comes to voting machines, we don't even have a, a piece of paper. We have no evidence. We have no evidence that the, the, the actual election is, is real. Right? Why not just go back to paper? Paper counting, and we'll count it at Madison Square Garden. Everybody could see how many ballots were cast for this one. How many? I mean, go back to the Stone Age. We'll count it by hand. Right? If no one trusts the other one, then we'll count it by hand. Right? It has to be voter integrity. It has to be. There has to be a fair election. The elections must be fair. Right? And when you get caught cheating, don't blame Russia. Take a sip of my espresso. Free and fair elections. Take the money out of politics. Right? Term limits. Right? You have to tax the corporations. Hold them to the tax codes. You tax everybody else. You tax the the regular guy who you know who who gets his eleven is a uh, is a. Uh, What's the tax thing called? <laughs> he gets he gets taxed out of his paycheck. He gets payroll tax, right? And he loses a third. He gives a, gives the government a third of his money or a quarter of his money every every two weeks or every week, right? So he's getting he's paying his fair share of tax. But the corporations that you know th that they don't pay a dime. They they you know they don't pay anything. They they you know corporate inversion. They 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 move the money overseas into tax havens in Panama and the Bahamas. In Ireland, now in China, wherever. I heard Apple's moving to China. Good. Don't let the door hit you in the ass. Get out. Right? So you have to give people. Here's an analogy, right? Say, 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 for instance, um, I'll use examples in, in our in our community. Say, a hey, Judy Cop, you, me, and and and. Sterling Price and 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 all the other people on the on this thing, right? We decide to go into a, uh, we decide to create a bank, right? And we're all we're all in on the bank, right? Okay, yeah, maybe I'm leading it, maybe I'm the the, the guy in front of the room talking, but essentially it's our bank, right? And we make this bank and we blow this bank up into something that's profitable for all people. The community loves us, right? And it's very profitable, and there's money coming in, and now. You're 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 part of that bank, right? You're 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 a, a member, a, a employee. You're you're someone in that organization, and you should, in fact, prosper from that organization. Pro prosper from the prosperity of that organization. I right? I don't think anybody would agree. Are you supposed to work and give all of your effort and all of your money over to some other entity that doesn't reciprocate? It's your bank, right? What I'm trying to say is that we we do have a in America we do have a uh, a a property interest, a property position in our citizenship. We are by citizenship. We are in fact guaranteed certain rights and certain. To, to share in the prosperity of the country. That's not the case anymore. That's, there's, people have been sold on the idea that, that um, everything I earn, everything that I do, like I, I have to earn it for myself, right? That I'm not really entitled to the prosperity of this country. The country is on its own. <laughs> That's something, right? Like I'm separate from the country. Right? The country is something over there and that I'm this this person that's supposed to fight to elevate the country. No, you are the country. You're a citizen of the country, right? Corporations get that. They understand it. And for them, there's the a socialized system of taking money uh, uh, from the government and funneling money back into politicians and getting the government to 
help it make more money and be more prosperous in that country. That system is only working for a very small 2% or so of the, of the, uh, the, the country, right? People, pff, you're out of the equation. You, you, you take it, you see, I know you helped us build the bank. Now get the hell out, right? <laughs> That's what they tell you, right? That's where we're at right now. So, so, so there's, so there's that. There's, there's this, this uh, psychology that people are not entitled to prosper from the wealth of the country, right? Why? Because the ruling class is controlling the game. It's monopoly, right? It's like sitting at, you know, the corporations right now. It's like sitting, remember when you were a kid and you played Monopoly and you, you know, guy next to you is like, he's got all, you have nothing. You got one, you got 50 cents. You got one dollar bill left, right? And you, but you're still rolling the dice because someone hasn't taken that last dollar from you and you hold it on. And the guy across from you, he's got all the houses and all the hotels, piles of money. He can't even spend the money anymore because he owns everything, right? So it's, it sucks. It just... The money just sits there, right? That's actually, that, there's actually a definition of that. It's called the velocity of money. That the velocity of money has stopped, right? Right? Prosperity, it, the game is over, right? So, there's no velocity of money. The money doesn't move through the economy and stimulate it. That's why we, we supported Bernie Sanders, right? And we, we supported what Bernie was saying, which was a new deal. Right, which what which is what FDR did is that we create a new deal where the corporate corporations you elevate and not even elevate but hold them to the taxation. During the New Deal, the taxation of corporations were very high, like eighty percent, ninety percent of their um, monies were taxed. Right, and and we got that money and we stimulated the economy and it was it was beautiful. People could buy homes. People had had lives again, right? That the balance of their 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 money was available. They didn't work. They didn't have to work eighty hours just to 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 stay in a shit apartment. Right? Or they were never able to buy home. They they were able to buy homes, you know. So we need to we need to go back to that new deal, and that new deal includes taking money out of politics. There's no reason on. There's no logical reason why the United States of America doesn't have a a, uh, a health care for all, just Medicaid, you know, Medicaid for all, right? You could, if still, if you're a rich guy and you want special treatment, you could go down the block and, you, and doctors can cater to those people and give them special needs. But essentially, f free and, and adequate health care for all our citizens is not something to ask terribly for. College tuition, right? It's not. It's not a lot to ask that we educate our our population, and by doing so, not put a, a, a an unnecessary uh, a student loan uh, that haunts them for the rest of their life, that that cripples them, crippling debt <laughs> on students, right? Eighteen year old students. Here's your debt, right? Here's now you owe us a hundred thousand dollars. And they'll, they'll bankruptcy can't erase that. There's nothing that that will erase that uh, debt. So a living wage. Why? Well, why fifteen? Why fifteen dollars an hour? That's not even a living wage. But why is it? Why is it so hard to hold these corporations that control everything and have so much liquid liquidity and so much money and so much power to pay the pay the people a living wage? Right? Instead of having given them ten dollars an hour, then they, then the government has to pick up the rest in terms of their rent, in terms of food stamps, in terms of housing. Right? They have to go down to the welfare office and get the get benefits from the city and the state and the government because these these rich corporations refuse to to to, to, to give in to a minimum wage. It's it's just people need to wake up. Instead, what 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 does the mainstream does the mainstream media talk about? Anything that I'm talking about right now? No, no. All they want to they want to distract you and say Russia, right? Like right. find an enemy and and and. Right. So I went on and on about that. It's um I again because because I'm in a, involved in a, in a in a lawsuit at a very uh, 
you know, singular level, just a person suing a, a large agency, you tend to wonder and you, you then investigate how is it possible that my voice can't be heard, right? <laughs> right? I'm, I'm blowing the whistle on corruption, but no one cares, right? No one in, inside of the establishment cares. In fact, they do everything they can to kneecap you before you get into that court, before you before you have, no, 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 shh, oh, this guy's crazy, oh, this guy's, no, 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 look, the write-ups, right, oh, no, he wrote him up, look, he's, 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 he's a bad guy, he's a bad guy, he's a bad guy, right, so, you know, First Amendment is, we're under attack, you know, you, you can't speak up anymore, you know, look at, look at, look at all the, all the commentators on, on, online, everybody's complaining, they're getting, they're getting their, their YouTube channels deleted, they're getting strikes, it's like, you know, for, for, for political, for political discourse, for speaking about politics, right? right? It's bad news, you know, it's bad news. Anybody who, who, anybody on the, on the lunatic left that's, that loves when, for example, the, the, the far right Infowars gets censored on YouTube. If you're, cha if you're championing, 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 championing that, you really are a lunatic because you 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 when they because after they're done censoring them they're gonna come and censor you right with your pink pussy hat out in the park right that you're next you're next you know so so that's a that's about all we'll we'll again just to reiterate March seven will be out on the court steps at two p.m. no signs we're we're not we're we're not we're not into that shit right we're not gonna go out there and make jackasses out of ourselves. Carry signs, right? get labeled as a as a leftist jerk off. <laughs> Have a great day, mate.